One of the very traditional of Chinese parents is it's better to do drugs than do stock market. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! This stock trading guru just missed out on $100,000 while filming this video with us. I hope it was worth it. So today we're here with Steven Ducks. He's 24 years old and famous on YouTube for being a day trading millionaire. He's gonna try to explain to us how he flipped $27,000 into $3 million. He'll also tell you what you can learn from him and how he likes to address his doubters on the internet. Let's go meet the guy. You know what's significant about this is that, uh, Stephen, you're originally from Chongqing. Yes. Chongqing is one of like the biggest cities in China. Correct. Um, but it's in Sichuan, and this we're here at Chongqing Yao Mei, which is a Chongqing hot pot restaurant here in Pasadena. And I mean, the food looks amazing, man. Yo, guys, I want to talk about uh, this mushroom log right here. This is crazy, man. She said to cut the mushroom off the log, and then it's straight into the pot. Straight into the pot. Let's do it. So you got the most known from turning $27,000 and flipping that into three million. Yeah, in about two years and a half. So we, we're way past three million now. Yeah, we're past three million. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to Cincinnati. Usually when a lot of people, they want to come to America, they may not choose Cincinnati as the first choice, right? <laughs> yeah, my parents are very traditional parents, so they don't really know outside of the country. So we basically got scammed by this one agent. And, scammed, okay. Yeah, and uh, it put me into like, Cincinnati. I'd watched so many of your interviews and I didn't know that's how you ended up in Cincinnati. <laughs> what, what are your first impressions of Cincinnati? You get there, are you just like, what? The first impression is why people here so big? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking for a different style of education because when I went to the Chinese school, everybody knows that it's very strict. But you have to study the books, you have to finish the exam and get good grades. That's all you need to do. But in it's here, they give you the chance to create stuff. Then uh, I was telling my teacher that I want to do a different mechanics for the plugs, the plugs into the wall. And the teacher just smacked me and said, don't think about it, ever think about that. Just get good wow. grades, that's it. So you were trying to innovate on the systems that were existing, whether yeah. that was a new electrical- I'm giving ideas, yeah. It seemed like from a young age, you were always thinking a little differently. Yeah. So how'd you learn English so well? I had this one friend, uh, Dante. Dante. Yeah. Dante. Other than that, I had the American girlfriend two years later. So that's how I get my English nice. a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> hey girl? Uh, yeah. yeah. What, what are the steps between that and like, yo, I want to become super successful and rich and wealthy and like, and make my own way? At that time, I was hardcore playing this game called StarCraft too. I got into like very top tier, like, pretty much world championship tournaments. After that, I had this one girlfriend, which you guys know, uh, we broke up. But uh, I did put a lot of work in there. So once it broke out, I was keep thinking to myself, oh, I need to get better. Okay, so you felt like it was something wrong with you or yeah, maybe it was something, something that you were lacking. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I'm lacking money. Very, lacking. very classic story motivated by women. <laughs> Not wrong. It just is how it is sometimes. I was looking for different industries to invest. Uh, I don't have that much money, about 20000 when I look at the real estate, I have to read contract and stuff like that. My English was not good at that time then, so I just completely ditched away. Uh, the second thing I looked at is the stock market. And uh, the only thing you need to do is just to look at the chart. You don't need to talk to people, you don't need to read stuff. It's all based on technical reading. And uh, I did learn a way of how to really use small capitals to grow into a bigger capital. Since uh, $20,000 is not that, it's not that much money, but it's not like very small amount of money. So you're stuck in that very awkward zones that you have no idea how to really grow. When you're trying to grow your money into all those Microsoft or Tesla, it doesn't really give you a really good risk reward because they move so slow. They take years and years and years to grow. What are, what are those called, large cap? Large cap. Large cap is companies that are worth about 500 million or more. Uh, most of the time we'll see over 1 billion. So those type of market caps, it's very difficult for you to invest. Uh, you either you have to invest in long term or you have a lot of money of hedge or hedge funds. But none of us have that kind of capital. At that time, I was thinking, OK, so if I pick a high risk, high reward, what if I can control the risk? Then I can only get the high reward. So if I can control the risk of low risk and low reward, if I control the risk to a very small amount, I still get the low reward. So I was doing research on small caps. I would say, OK, well, how much percentage can small cap grow in one day? Then I tracked about uh, one month of statistics that small cap can grow 
two thousand percent in a day. So if you can, if I have twenty thousand, catch that two thousand percent, I can grow twenty thousand into a lot of money. First trade, I got extremely lucky. Uh, I think I invested about twelve thousand and made forty thousand. The first day, I went into the small cap. Of course, the second, I think the third trade, that I pretty lost all the. 40,000 and again from the first trade. Is it like gambling? It's not gambling. To be honest, I've been tracking the statistics for almost five years. The pattern that I've been tracking has about, some of them has 93% winning percentage. So if I see this type of pattern, I size in at least 300,000 and then make 150,000 per day. Uh, it doesn't really happen that often. Uh, it happens about five times a year. And if you, you developed it or you, you? Some of it I developed it, some of it I didn't, but some of it I improved it. Uh, based on the basics. Yeah, a lot of people asking me, okay, so what if you are making this much amount of money, let's say three million to five million per year, per year why are you not working for a hedge fund? Very good question. Also, I can't get, off, uh, get over like, for hedge funds, you're holding somebody else's money. So if you win, that's good. If you lose, you're losing somebody else's money. So that's why I can't get over that. I did get invited of a hedge fund before, but that's not for me. So but, you're not making the most money you possibly can. Because I don't have that, that big of money to make $20 million per day. But it will take me years and years to develop a new different pattern because the pattern doesn't really work on the bigger caps. Mm. So you have to innovate more patterns. In and that's just a whole cap. different world, right? Yeah, it's a whole different world. It's more competitive too. Yeah. When you mean pattern, real quick, what is a pattern? Pattern is, let's say every time when the stock hits this specific level, it goes down and you can repeat 80 times and 60% of the time or 70% 70, 70 of the time they win. So that call, it calls a pattern. So you got a fix in the game. No, not a fix. I was able to calculate certain patterns using algorithms. The That's patterns simple. are visual, right? Patterns are visual, yeah. Okay, so it's literally like a graph. It's a graph. <laughs> so you're basically looking at the numbers and the visual data and coming up with a way to track the spikes and predict the spikes. Correct, yeah. That's the right expenditure. Would you call yourself an independent stock trading team? It's like a retail trader. Retail trader. Yeah. So I started to build my own data to based on the first win trade that, okay, I want to track this one trade, similar market cap, similar action, similar pattern, similar charts, everything is similar. I want to track what's the exact winning percentage on this specific pattern that I just did of my lucky trade. So the perfect, perfect entry for me, for, for the system is two. Uh, if it's machine, does it? And for human, it's about 1.5. So when you, once you look at the human uh, reaction when, and you look at the machine reaction, then you can find that, okay, well, there's about 0 0.5 gap. Now next time, I'm going to try to improve based on the human action. So then I'm trying to get 1.7, 1.8, getting closer to the perfect system. So are you saying your ability, your huge advantage was that you're part machine? Uh, <laughs> yes, I will say the more, Machine like you can think. Machine like you think, yeah. Rational thinking. One of the keys, and you guys, you always talk about this, is like taking the emotion out of it. Yeah. When you get emotional, you make irrational decisions, you rush through things, you panic, you get frantic. Those are all things you want to avoid when you're dealing with, with the stocks stock market. and money, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I'll be honest, like, I try to dip my toes in stocks a little bit, which is on the app. And even me, I was like, checking, I was like, oh, it went down today. Oh, it keeps going, oh, weekend, it still went down. Yeah. And then I'm just like, this sucks. And then already I was like, oh, man, I'm being so emotional about this. I'm so not Steven right now. <laughs> People go into the stock market blind. They don't know what the stock market is. They don't know what bigger cap or small cap is. They don't even know the terminology. And when they go in, they just basically throw money at people that are like, like us. Right. So. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. Uh, you, what you're saying is pretty much the average behavior. And forgive me for my language. I'm going to call these people your average Joe dumb hey, and, yeah. and the reason I can call him that is because when it comes, that's me. I am average Joe dumb Not that I'm a dumb person in like every aspect of my life, mm -hmm. but when it comes to the financial instruments and financial worlds, mm -hmm. like any cap you're talking about, small cap, mid cap, large cap, I don't really know anything. I lost a bunch of money on crypto. But and you don't really know what crypto is. I really didn't know. I, yeah. I watched like three videos and I read like three pages, you know, like summaries. Uh -huh. And it peaked when I was in New York, it peaked at like, what is 1920? And I got it on the way down. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh yeah, I got to get in on this game. Uh -huh. And then 
it went down even more. <laughs> it was just 6,000. <laughs> so can you explain to me what I was thinking as Mr. Average Joe Dumb? All the social media that, not just you guys, most people that heard about Bitcoin is pretty much our moms and stuff like that. They have no idea. Even I have a clue of what Bitcoin is. And it caused like a, a chain reaction of people, a bunch of people are basically chasing the stock. Now, the sheep. The it, sheep are chasing. The sheep are chasing. So now one of the very uh, important behavior of, of stocks is you can see the stock trend is starts to speeding up. That means people are getting emotional. When the stock is spiking, people feel like, okay, oh, oh God, I missed the, the action. I need to get in this game. When the stock is starting to speeding up, there's more volume going in. More volume is more Bitcoin are injected into the stock market. When the stock speeds to the certain point, and you can track that how far or how much percentage beginning of the like the, the slower trend spike and starting with that, you can try to start that starting point and track the end point for any type of industries. Typically, they speed up about like say generally 50%, 70%. At that 70%, you're looking for the first uh, people who sell. So typically when a stock come after a huge spike, they follow with a huge downtrend. Right, because people are, the other people who bought it early are like, this is my time to exit and yeah. make a bunch of money, right? Yeah, and people who are chasing, they say, oh God, it's dropping. So sell, 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 sell. So when they kept sell and cause a huge downtrend, and a lot of people did not get out. But the retail traders, like you guys, are stuck at the top of the game, at the top of the Bitcoin. And I then, still didn't get out. I still, I still didn't get it. You still have Bitcoin. And when the stock bounces a little bit, I know, okay, well, those people did not get out when they bought at 20000 I'm going to short it. When you buy a stock, you expect the price to go up. On the other hand, when you short a stock, you expect the price to go down. Here comes the mentality. I bought at 20000 the stock dropped to 15000 I said, oh God, I got to sell. And I cannot sell right here. I'm going to sell when I um, maybe get close to cut it even and I'm out of this game. So when soon as the stock spikes, you will crash again because people are selling at that point because they mm. want to cut it even. That's why I bet against it, then stock goes to 6,000. So you very much have a very strong grip of understanding of what Mr. Average Joe Dumb is thinking. Yeah. If it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return. No way. And no one's paying attention. Because I'm, I used to be a Mr. Joe Dumb and I started from the beginning, I know exactly what you guys are thinking because you guys are like me. I think. One of the very uh, important investing advice for like all of you guys is 90% of the people who are investing in the stock market lose money. And that 10% of the people always are doing the opposite of the 90% of the people are doing. So if you think, okay, all, all my people, all the people, all my friends and family around, around me are talking about Bitcoins, are buying it, you know they are 90%, so you need to do the opposite. When they're buying Bitcoin, you need to not to buy Bitcoin. I should have talked to you like two years ago about this. <laughs> no, no, you know what it was, David? We were like looking up NBA highlights and we were like, hey, should we get into Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> That's not how you make money from Bitcoin. Mr. <laughs> Joe Dumb <laughs> Obviously, Mr. Joe Dumb probably got MSNBC or CNBC or whatever, you know, Bloom, Bloomberg on. Bloomberg, yeah. Well, what do you think of that? If I'm doing the opposite the way of what they're saying, I can win about 60% of the time. So that means they're right 40% of the time. Yeah, even More. and lower, even lower. That's, that's the average. Based on prevailing sentiment of the market, and banks and popular culture, yes, it's a foolish investment, but uh, everyone's wrong. Steven, this was such a dope thing to eat Chongqing hot pot with you. Do you think we can go, help, can you help us move past the Joe Dumb <laughs> I can Help make us, help un-Joe Dumb us. Guys, on another note, this hot pot was really good. It's really good. And guess what, that spicy side, it's really freaking spicy, man. Yeah, Chongqing oh, well. has a little bit more flavor and Chengdu is a little bit more spicy. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I'm just saying, man, they give you the fresh mushroom log. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it look like a baguette. All right, guys, we're going to finish up eating, and then we are going to get really technical, and Steven is going to help us take the first step out of the dumb stage. <laughs> the dumb stage. All right, Steven, we are here in an office, and behind us is your stock trading platform live, yeah. straight from your computer. Yeah. Things are going on, and something crazy just happened. I was talking to uh, one of my students that when the stock gets close to that 7.5 area, uh, we would short. Now, so this is when you would attack. This would is where I would attack at seven. Then I look at where they're at. It's at 3.5.
So by filming this video, I lost about 150,000. I lost about 150,000. Uh, wow. All right, so on this part, Steven's gonna actually explain how on the car ride up from Orange County today, he missed an opportunity to profit $100,000. And these opportunities don't come around every day. Typically with, this is patterns called one of the pattern called Gap Up Short. And it's very, one of the very strict, restricted criteria. And it pretty much met about every single criteria. Uh, only we call the high of 7.5 as a resistance. When stock drops about 75%, uh, obviously again, re pushes to, uh, to the high and a little bit close to the high. So you want to leave a little bit of range. Uh, and the pick of a round number, which is around seven. So if you put a seven line, that's the right, that's exactly where the entry is. So if you short it here, size it a little bit, let's say 30,000 shares or 40,000 shares. So you make about three to four dollars per share, 40,000 times four, that's 160,000, that's the profit. You saw a second spike, and the second spike wasn't as high as the first spike, which leads you to believe there was gonna be a steep drop off. Yes, now if you take a deep look of this chart, all right, so when you look at the stock market, as soon as the market opened, right, you see a huge drop, you're emotional. So people who bought at open got trapped. So let's say I bought at 6.2, now it dropped about 5.5. I'm, I'm nervous. Oh, you're panicking. I'm panicking. You think in your head you already lost it's gonna, money. It's, it's gonna drop more. So I see the stock coming back, I say, oh, I feel good. I feel good about myself. And once the stock keeps going, keeps going, then once it hits to a certain point, people right here starting taking profits because, oh, I don't wanna hold this anymore because I already entered around six. And when they see this huge red candle pop down, they say, oh God, because this one was so fast. This one was about 30 seconds. So when, when in 30 seconds, the stock drops about $1, you're going to be panicking. So this, the next reaction for you will be selling, selling the stock. So it will cause chain reactions, chain reaction keeps trending oh. down because people keep buying it and people are back keep selling it down. Do the people in the small caps, do they know anything about Austin Innovation? Do they know what it does? Like, do, do you study it or you're like, I don't even know what they're selling? This company, no, I have no idea what this company does do, no. Right, you don't zero, know if they're zero. in medical. So you don't have you don't to know, know anything about the company. No, you, like, you don't have to know if they got a new product coming out or if uh, their CEO is about to step down. No, no not You're that. just looking at the pattern. Zero, because by general statistics, 99% of the micro cap always fails. So micro caps is around under 100 million. So it qualifies as a small cap. Small cap, small cap always fell in a long right, run. Right, because this is only worth 25 million. Yeah. So it's very volatile. Yes. The very. graph, like maybe let's, can we pull up like a, a big cap company and see that it, it doesn't look like this today, correct? Uh, yes. Now this is a bigger so, cap. It's worth about 38 billion. Okay. And you see the, 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 the range of moving. So uh, this is Tesla right here. Tesla, yeah. So 219 goes to 212. If you enter here and exit here, you only make $7 out of $200 stock. Right. right, so that's about what two percent. Right, but since as a retail trader we don't have that much money, so buying this it doesn't ha it has pretty much a zero risk reward. So it's basically like if you have a small amount of money, it's better to play the smaller companies. Yeah, because how many shares can I afford? Let's say I can only buy ten. Ten of yeah. of Tesla. Yeah. Then I'm even if I short it, I made only. Let's say ten. Then yeah. you you short here, you buy it here, you make seven dollars. So seven times ten, you make seventy bucks per day. Uh, so <laughs> this is basically why you would never day trade these gigantic stocks like yeah. Tesla and Amazon, right? Yeah. You, you invest at 20,000, you make 70, 70 bucks. What did your parents say when you first were like, you know what, I'm gonna go into small caps. Uh, oh. It's a lot more volatile, a it's... lot more uh, risk reward goes up, but I'm, I devised a plan to get more reward than they risk. Said, they said uh, it's better, uh, one of the very traditional of Chinese parents is it's better to do drugs than do stock market. <laughs> <laughs> what about the Chinese stock market? Is there any money to be made there doing okay. what you do? So Chinese stock market, it will, it's regulated. So the maximum moving up percentage will be 10% per day. That's the maximum. It moves to 10%, then stock market stops for you today. And if it moves down 10%, stock market stops for you today. So this one is free movements. So you can move 50% down on one day. So you can make that gigantic risk reward in one day. Is it because China wants to kind of limit the volatility it, where they don't want the crazy gains and crazy losses? It's because, controlled market. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For your style of investing that you've innovated and developed, what is the base amount that people need to be able to like even begin to test the waters? Uh, 5,000. Yeah. Right, okay. then 5, so, so let's say $500. Okay. What should I do with $500? Is there anything I can do on any platform that would 
at least be uh, helpful to me. Okay, so if you have five hundred dollars, you have, you gotta be really careful with the commissions because some of the broker rip, rips uh, commissions. So, uh, but right, they get money per trade. They right? get money per trade, like E Trade, uh, Sure Trader, or Robinhood. Those three brokers you need to stay away with if you have like very small amount of money. So with five hundred dollar uh, micro cap, I think it's for you. Micro cap. Micro cap. So that's smaller than small it's, cap. That's smaller than small caps, and you can focus on. Either you go extreme, like billions of dollars of uh, uh, market cap, then you dip buy because dip holds much better uh, compared to small caps. If you are using, let's say, a billion dollar cap loses 20% in one day, then you dip buy, you, can, you have a much better chance to make money. And for micro caps, it sometimes it moves to thousands of percent. If you get right. lucky, you can, you can make a lot. A lot of, of people money. say the micro caps, I think, are like the little startups that just started that maybe have a chance to blow no, up. No, micro caps is anywhere between like under 10 million. So first, you have to pick the right market. NASDAQ, New York Exchange, and OTC. You do not want to pick OTC and pink sheets, and that's not for you. Execution will be extremely bad. So I would recommend uh, NASDAQ only. Uh, when I started, I spent about 10 hours a day 365 days, I did not take a break, zero break. Uh, so people thought I was, I was crazy because there's like charts on the walls, like a mad scientist and making, like charts, everywhere, mind, right? like, <laughs> making charts everywhere. Uh, the creating patterns will be a little bit more difficult than learning a pattern. So I would say I already created a pattern. People only had only comes to learn, then it will be much quicker for them to learn instead of trying to create a pattern. Let me show you a little bit more extreme. So today. Look at this drop. Whoa! Nine to four. Look at how much yeah. range that can be made per day. Right. This is apply. This is A R C I, and it's worth. This is a micro cap, right? This is a micro cap. Correct. Worth less than ten million. Yeah. Correct. So what what happened? So here? you you could have made a lot of money here. Yeah. But you didn't see. Is this a pattern? This one know? happened right after you left. <laughs> People want to buy breakouts. So when a breakout happens, it needs to pass the yesterday high. So people who bought the breakout above seven dollar area. And when it goes down under $7 area, I know people who bought the breakout are all trapped. When they're trapped, they wanna sell. When they sell, I will add another selling pressure, make them even panicking more. So that's how I panicked. So I probably short around six to seven area and make about $3 per share. Uh, probably about 35% of its own gain, of, of the investment. If you were watching this and you saw it jump to nine. I wouldn't be touching. This not is touching. not touching because you, you don't know where the back order is. You don't know where people are holding. And you don't know where people are trapped. As soon as the reaction happens, you know where the people oh, are trapped. Okay. Right, so you want to be patient, wait and see, wait and see, wait and wait see. And see. That's, that's where patient, that's what people always say in patient. Is. Patient is a smart word for trading the market because sometimes you've been patient and not looking for the right pattern, you still lose money. So What, what pattern is this? This pattern is like losing momentum for micro caps, one of the this is not a very specific pattern. This is um, fake outs for micro cap and loses entire momentum. Mm. You know, it's funny when you talk about stocks, it's like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever watched when, when Kobe Bryant is breaking down all his offensive possessions mm. on uninterrupted. Like he just, Detailed. On, yeah. When Kobe Bryant is just breaking down every single possession when he's like, okay, my man was to the left. He had his right foot back. So I jab stepped here and I knew that he was gonna back up two inches because I had just driven, you know, got a layup on him previously. So I knew I'm going to pull up for the jumper and he's going to give me enough space. Uh, it, it's almost like hearing a savant like Kobe Bryant, he's a basketball savant. You are a stock much, savant. You're just breaking down everything. Pretty much predicted. Yeah, what I do is when I track those patterns, I will track the frequency of the pattern, how much, how many times they happen per year. I can generate a sheets that how much money I can make. It's a simulated again, how much money I can make per year. So if I miss a play or I messed up a play, I won't be getting emotional because I know this is how much money I can make. You read, I mean, you can read it. You can, you can read it. You can yeah. read the matrix. Yeah, so that's... But, but you're saying that with any amount of study, a person can also learn to read the matrix. Yes. So I would say people can, needs to put about like two hours to four hours. It would take them like a year or two to pretty much get all the technicals. Yeah. Okay. What is a, a hard stop? are hard out and you said you don't recommend it. Is that when you're shorting something and what does that mean like? Especially on this ARCI, this ticker, when you want to want to short, you do not want to short like when it's on the breakout because you don't see any momentum, you don't see any pattern. This is why uh, you, need, you are trading basically by reacting. But that one, OSN, it's pretty much predicted. So you will know the exact statistics. Right, because there was more spikes, right? Yeah. 
So it fit a pattern. It fit a pattern, but that one it doesn't really fit a pattern. So you can kind of pick that which one has a pattern, which one doesn't have a pattern. So which, the one doesn't have pattern, it's more risky. That's why you shouldn't be shorting. You just said you have a criteria that something has to fit before you go in. Yes. And what, you have to make sure it hits every single criteria. green light. Yes. Yeah. But what is it? Is it a common mistake that somebody goes, okay, hit five out of six green lights, I'm still going in. Students always do that, always do that. They always do that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, every time I do remind them, please make sure to follow every single criteria before you make a trade. You said your female students tend to wait all yeah. the green criteria are hit yeah. more than the male they're students. They're more patient. You know? I feel like maybe they're, they're not, less, as, not as greedy. Not as greedy, Not as yeah. greedy as men, yeah. yeah. Right. You don't really need to hit a home run every single trade. You can make decent trade about 30 times per year to make about 200 to 300,000 per year based on a 30,000 investment. We want to talk about some of the criticism that people have on the internet. What's one of the main criticisms that people say? I'll say I'm not real and uh, uh, your, no, they're saying your profits are, are fake, everything's not true, but here uh, it shows exactly how much. So this is literally a statement? A statement per, on one month. Where, where, there's my name right here. All right, so it's, it proves it's my Your statement. real name is Du Xiuxian. Yeah, that's okay. my name. So the reason why my name is Steven Ducks is that. That's why, mm, so okay. that's my last name. And so now- So you are tricking people. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can see the beginning value of February 28th will be 40,000. So I started the account with 40,000, right? The end of the March 31st value is 292,000. So wow. in one month, I turned 40,000 into 292,000. <laughs> This is the month that I'm showing you that it's possible to turn a small account into a big account in one month. And it doesn't, I'm not even talking about in a year. Where would you rank this as far as like how good you did? Like this one is probably a, one of the best, one uh, of the best months. Okay. I, uh, months, months I did based on how much capital I have. This is one when I was placing a bet with my friend. He said, I don't believe you. Uh, show me how you did it. This is another broker that I use called Trade Zero. This is from January 1st to 2019 to January 31st, right? Now, you can see net profit. So net profit, if it goes down, will be 243,000 in one month. My name, that's my account number, so. Yeah, you just put it out there like that. I mean, <laughs> would you say this is generally how a successful sheet would look like? So well, zeros, look, gains, losses, more, more gains than more, losses. More, there, there's always losses. There, you can't really avoid losses in the market as long as you win more than you lose. We read a lot of the comments and we were looking for some more criticism. So we found some and some of these are comical, some of them are funny comments and some of them are trying to dig deeper yeah. and trying to find something. But one of them is like, uh, oh man, you must be of the Chinese mafia. Uh, I'm not a Chinese mafia, that's, for, that's number one. <laughs> let's say, let's say a proof. I have a lot of money at, at the beginning. But at that statement, it showed I had $40,000 at the beginning and grow to $292,000. So even though I have a lot of money, I don't have the skill to grow that. So, so you're saying even if you're, you inherited a bunch of money, yeah. if that was true, that you can still show people you have the skills, the knowledge, and the patience. That's right, you still to, grew the 40 to 290. To make money. Why would you sell programs and why would you try to teach people if you're already rich? Right, so that's a very interesting like thing because I started this education service as a good intention because you can see my statements. I can I can make 200 to $300,000 in one month easily. So you know, times like times a year, it's about three million to four million dollars, two to three million dollars, it comes conservatively and per year. And when I make this educational program, because the first thing that went through uh, at the very beginning of my career, I spent a lot of money. As a broke college student, you don't have that much money as 14,000, but I basically used my tuition for the stock market and I almost had, haven't had enough to pay enough to pay my tuition. So I don't want people to go through the same stage that I like, um, went on a couple Right, because you went through a rough learning phase yeah. where you lost a lot of money. Yeah. This is BS. These patterns I found on the market scribbled on some pages. Uh -huh. No, there are armies of PhD quants looking at like things like this. And the bottom line is simply these patterns don't exist. The kind of day trading he's doing is heavily penalized by the tax system and the brokerage houses. It's corrupt, but that's the game. You not only have to beat the market, but beat it by way more than institutional investors to see any real gains if you're day trading. Okay, so institution people that they, it's probably called hedge funds. They have millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. In this market, when they invest into this specific micro caps, most micro caps will tend to go to zero. They will do offerings, warrants, and all types of stuff. 
when they invest, no matter how much money you will get taken out by the company itself. So it's basically they are inv investing in an empty shelf company. That's why the institution ever, never wants to go into uh, this type of play. For the patterns, you can go track your statistics by yourself. What if someone says, it's not quite that simple because even if Steven makes 50K in a day, he's going to get a short-term capital gains tax of 38% right off the bat. The tax percentage, yes, yeah, that's, that's about right. There's some way you can like you can deduct the short borrow fees and uh, the commission fees if you are you if you are running an LLC, so that percentage will go down a little bit. But yeah, if you just blindly just using the capital gains, yeah, that's about right percentage. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry sounds like a genius in a bull market, but in a bear market, Tom, Dick, and Harry gotta go look for regular jobs. Basically, yeah. saying like what your tactics and patterns is, it's working because there's a global trend of a bull market yeah, but yeah. once it goes bare it's not going to work anymore well for that reference i'm shorting so the, the more bearish market it is i'm making more money now for different markets let's say bull market or, or bearish market the entire overall market does not have any correlation compared like correlation with the micro caps i have tracked about twenty thousand samples altogether. it does not have any correlation so let's say the overall market is dropping today about two to three percent then the stock, the micro cap stocks can still go up a thousand percent in a day. There's many scenarios like that happened before. 3.5 million a year from a 19 year old stock kid. Okay, but there's an eight year old showing his toy cars from half eaten Kinder Eggs on YouTube and making 22 million a year. You gotta wonder who the real brain child is. The stock kid, which is you, or the Kinder Egg kid. So yeah, like, there's people who make so a lot more money than me, but there's one thing I always had an advantage. I typically sp spend about 45 minutes every single day, that's it. And I gain about $3 million per year. That's so much financial freedom. I, I don't know, I, I, I do see a lot of haters. I, at the beginning, before I post my account statements and showing my, like, the, uh, the audited statements, and people, a lot of people are doubting. I understand that because the, people are like out there in the industry, they're older than me, they're 30, 40 years old, and they see a 19 year old and, and doing, Better it's, it's really like because they don't want to see you do it because they don't want to believe that they could have done it and they did it. When you look at the like, people who are better than you, like before I started, I look, there's one guy I'm really look up to. Now he's one of my uh, one of the best friends, and uh, at that time I don't see him as like I, like jealous or stuff like that. I, I look at him like okay, well, I need to learn what he what he's telling me. I need to learn the message. And if you don't try to learn and try to hate, you will never become better. Like that's just the fact. That's fact. I feel like the way you're talking about it, man, it's no different than the way like Kobe approaches basketball. Kobe tries to learn the post moves from Hakeem Olajuwon. He tries to learn some dribble moves from Chris Paul. Yeah. He, he's really trying to build himself to be the best, you know. Different I, people have different talent. You just you know, be what's the word? Modest. There you go. Modest in and willing to learn that people who are better than you. It doesn't matter about the age, it doesn't matter about where you're coming from. So, what was the first thing you bought with all the money that you made? Right off the bat, when I bought like about the I bought a McLaren, um, when I made my like first uh, I think it was the first million, then uh, after that, I bought a Ferrari a 488, and after that, I'm thinking buying another. The goal I want to buy is like a Koenigsegg. Eventually, I want to go into uh, the energy sector. I want to build like free energies and go back to the engineering stuff. Oh, you want to go back to the engineering? Yeah, it's, it's because at the first, well, first it was the broke club. Second is I, I have creative minds. Like I want to build something that I don't have enough funds to build. So after that, I will have, be able to have enough funds. You, I can build the model I want. You want to go back to your first dream of even in China that you told us that story where you said, hey, you were telling your teacher, what if we did this? That yeah. would be more efficient. And yeah. she said, no, Steven, don't think like that. That's silly. Yeah. And then you said, okay, let me make millions of dollars. Then I'm gonna come back to this <laughs> idea. I don't really care to... about my legacy. I just wanna, like, I care about like how many people I can help and what I can do to this world when I like build stuff to benefit the world, so. As, uh, the first minute I do get that like buying stuff is very fun and stuff like that. But once you had, what's the difference between let's say a five hundred thousand dollar car and a million dollar car? Yes, there's a difference, but eventually it just comes down into uh, showing off and right. as a driving tool. Yeah. So, that stuff is uh, it, that stuff is like 
it's fleeting. You get that feeling, but then that burst is gone. Yeah, like that instant, it, it won't last over like six months. I, one thing I've noticed for me is that the people who are really successful and almost have this outlier tier of success, it's never those trappings that incentivize them. Because it can't, it can keep somebody going for a little while, a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, but once you get to a certain level, you gotta have something else that's fueling you. Where can people find out more about this? Because I had an amazing time even just researching this video. You can find out my website, uh, stevendopsy.com, and uh, there's different tiers you can choose. If you are not feeling comfortable, you can choose whatever, whatever tiers you, you want. But if you wanna really like dive into, uh, dive into the market and starting with a small amount of money, uh, then uh, there's other programs you can choose. I liked about Steven is like, did you, uh, you know, you just, you just give it away. Yeah, I, I'm being transparent, like, I don't really try to hide He something. is giving stuff away for free. Even though I give away of my account statement, like account statements, so. He actually showed you his account number. Is it? You still will have to put in the work yourself, right? Yeah, you still have to put work in for yourself. Like, there's no free stuff that coming. That's for me, my biggest takeaway from talking to you is that, like, you can't enter this world and not know anything about it. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. You know what it kind of reminds me of? And this is just the analogies from my world, what I put my brain into. Mm. It's like taking a street ball player off like the court, even though they look good, and putting them in the five on five in the NBA, where they're running all these complex NBA play actions and sets, and they're icing and they're running horns, and they got all these complicated plays, and the street ball guy is just completely lost. And he's like, dude, <laughs> I thought basketball is basketball. Yeah. Wrong. At an NBA level, the play actions are so complex. People are running zones. They're switching schemes every other play. If you don't know what's going on on the court, yeah. you're gonna lose. Yes. Basically, if you wanna win in any game, stock game or basketball, and not end up like a Mr. Joe dumbass, you've gotta increase your IQ and understanding of its inner workings. Steven Ducks has a website all about it. You making this amount of money after putting that amount of work and thinking and studying and preparation, mm -hmm is not crazy, it's not unbelievable. Put in the work to make it sound easy now after you did all the preparation, figured out the patterns, read all the books, spent money on all those courses first, you know, yeah. you went through all that. So that's why I think it's just because you're young, it looks like you haven't been through anything. Yes, correct, yeah. Um, you started early. Started yeah, you started early, yeah. early. You went, you struggled early and then you made it out. Yeah, I know it's good to hear that you wanna do something else after this. I think some people would think, oh, just keep making money, make, make 20 million, make 30 million, and then you're like, maybe I will, but maybe I won't. Maybe I wanna do something else. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Money's yeah. not the, the life goal. Right. I, think that, that is I don't know if you ever describe your brain as a hard drive, but like I said, everybody kind of has a different brain, right? Some people's hard drives are faster, some are slower, some have bigger capacity, some are, you know, not as big. But at the end of the day, everybody can make decisions as an adult about what they want to fill the terabytes of their hard drive with. What do you want to put in your hard drive? Definitely, if you want more information, check out the description in the link below. Tell us what you think. Uh he addressed the criticism. And, and, and you want people to get at you in the comments, right? Yeah, I well, want people to give me the criticism. <laughs> I hey, don't see it. hey, he said, come at me, bro. <laughs> he said, how many more statements do you need to see? <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video, man. We ate hot pot, we talked about your background, you talked about uh, how to read the market, how you do things, and you even addressed the criticism that people have for you on the internet. And honestly, to address the criticism on the internet was an honorable thing to do because you don't have to. But uh, anyways, guys, I hope you guys learned something because we learned a lot and I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. If you guys have comments for Steven, he'll read them. Um, but thank you so much. Check out his information down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. So talking to Steven today made me realize a few things. Number one, most people are like us you know, the 90%. We followed what everyone else was doing and we ended up losing thousands of dollars in crypto. Pretty average human psychology according to Steven. We know about a lot of things, but stocks and crypto is not one of them. That's why we're one of those Mr. Joe dumb until we're not. And number two, there's still a lot of studying and practice involved in what he does. He's not just teaching you how to get rich, he's teaching you how to fish. And number three, you have to be patient. Wait for an opportunity that fits the pattern, then make a move. Getting emotional about it is only gonna lead to irrational decisions. You gotta think like a machine. You gotta think like Steven. So uh, so I majored in uh, environmental and chem chem chemical engineering. And one of the, my dream 
of the future is you can see a lot of people in countries and countries fighting for energies, like never ending. Well, whether it's fossil fuel, no fuels, and it, like if they can solve the energy that was coming from something that can generate a tons of energy without costing too much of um, trying to fight, like countries trying to fight, then uh, that would be my goal to see that people not be fighting. You still play StarCraft? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick, I gotta ask the, uh, you know what everybody was commenting? Yeah. They were saying all, over all the videos you've made over the years on YouTube, mm. your English got progressively better. It's because I'm practicing. The same thing goes to the stock market. 